Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this conclusion video, we'll summarize and look at the overall picture of core data that we've painted over these videos, and also look ahead to the intermediate core data series that's coming up. In this beginner series, you've seen the basics of core data, modeling your data with attributes and relationships, adding records, fetching them, and then updating and deleting data. Modeling your data in core data is easy with the built-in data model editor. With entities, attributes, and relationships, you've seen how to get the data fields you need and also how to link records with each other. You also saw how to use lightweight migrations, which can automatically handle minor changes to your data model. In the intermediate core data series, you'll learn about mapping models, which you can use to handle more substantial changes to the data model, or if you need some custom logic to move data around during the migration. Throughout this beginner series, we've also taken a look at some parts of the core data stack. That includes the managed object context, persistent store, and the persistent store coordinator. We've been passing the managed object context around from the app delegate to the root view controllers in the tab bar controllers, and then on to other view controllers pushed onto the navigation stack. That's a simple way to handle it, as we've only needed to access the managed object context and not other parts of the stack so far. In the intermediate series, you'll learn some slightly more advanced techniques around the core data stack. You'll look at passing around more than just the managed object context, and also why you might want more than one managed object context. The major strengths of core data as I see them are its built-in support. You don't need any third-party tools or libraries, and you can get started in Xcode very easily. There's performance. Core data isn't the speediest and most performant solution out there, but it strikes an excellent balance between speed and memory usage. If your fetch request returns a million records, for example, core data won't actually load all the data for all million records. It'll tell you that there are a million records, but then it'll be smart about only instantiating full objects and pulling in data as you actually access those objects and their properties. Core data has a simple interface for data access. Data attributes are just like properties with native types such as string and float. Relationships and their inverses are handled seamlessly and look just like typed properties or sets. But as we talked about in the introduction video, core data isn't a universal solution. It works great for structured data, it handles relationships well, and it handles loading data in a memory efficient way. If you've determined that it's a good fit for your app, then you're in good company. That's it for this conclusion video and this video tutorial series. I hope you now have a sense of what core data is, the basics of how to use it, and whether it'll be useful for your own apps. If it is, I encourage you to continue on with the intermediate series for even more core data. If you are continuing on, there is one final challenge for you. The starter project for the intermediate series is the same My Devices app, but with some added features. The final challenge document lists out these features, which you can try building yourself. When you're done, you can compare your project to the starter project from Intermediate Core Data video number one, and you'll be all set to move on. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.